Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. The title of our series is Promotion for Kingdom Purpose. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious, glorious love for us. Father, we thank you that you are good and you are wonderful, you are awesome, you are mighty, you are El Shaddai, the Ahogona Menehegenana. Father, you are almighty, the greater one, the most high. Father, we set our eyes upon you. Father, we look to you and you are our God. And Father, we thank you for your holy written word. Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation in your word, your will, and your law. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts, and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things we do not know. Father, we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we thank you for word in due season. Father, we thank you for answers and solutions. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And Father, we pray that your healing anointing drive out every form of sickness, every form of disease and every pain in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we break every yoke, we command every burden to be removed in the name of Jesus, we break every chain. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we speak strength and peace to the minds and the souls of people. Father, we thank you so much for your holy, holy, holy word. Father, let your word minister strength to us. Let your word build us up and help us to inherit the blessing. Father, you are good, you are awesome, and you are wonderful. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Our God is good, and our God is great, and our God is awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You should take time to meditate on the works of God's hands. I do it as a as a regular practice. Uh, open the Bible, find out the miracles which he has done. Just go through them, you know, every now and then. Just read them, read them, read them. It will help you. It will build hope in you. It will build faith inside you. And when the time comes when you need a miracle, when you need to believe God for some something, hallelujah, <laughs> you will have hope. You will have faith. You will be ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 4 verse uh, 5. Before we go there, let, let me show you a scripture for what I just said. Go with me to Psalm 78. Hallelujah. Look at this. Let's read from verse um, 3 which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. Underline that phrase, praises of the Lord, and his strength, say his strength, and his wonderful works that he has done. Why are we praising God? Because of the things that he has done by his strength. Because of the things that he has done, um, worked the wonderful works that he has done hallelujah um okay let's go to verse 5 for he established a testimony in jacob and appointed a law in israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children it's a commandment this is something we should do but we should read them by ourselves build our faith and and our hope in god and then we should teach them to our children Notice this, that the generation to come might know them. God wants our children to know the miracles. Now, instead of reading scary stories to your children before they sleep, why don't you read uh, the works of God? Eh? Just begin from Genesis, go through the various miracles God has done. Make that the bedtime story for your children. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. And that, that will strengthen them. Hallelujah. You can build conversations around this. Around the works of God Almighty. 
that will build the lives of your children that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born who should arise and declare them to their children hallelujah why that they might set their hope in god and not forget the works of god but keep his commandments hallelujah when when children are aware of what god has done and when they understand what god will do for them in their life they 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 will have the strength to move forward in life i hear about people losing hope people committing suicide because they didn't get a seat in a church i mean in a college right people you know committing suicide for all kinds of reasons people getting into depression uh, acting as if the whole world has ended you know for, for for small failures for little setbacks no god is with you right and god has done great things for his people there are people who have faced harder circumstances than what you are facing right now i still remember you know when we were in a, uh, when we got saved we had huge debt problems and um, we we thought okay we have a big amount man or and uh, our situation is really bad because you know we we have such a large amount which we have to uh, pay back and uh, <laughs> this is huge <laughs> that's what we were thinking and then we we started trusting god and we began fellowship with other believers and um, and we started hearing their testimonies you know <laughs> and we found out that our situation was no way near <laughs> i mean it was not half as bad as what others were facing i mean <laughs> there were people who 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 didn't have food for a, for a day for they didn't have their next meal because of uh, their debt problems there were people like that they had to go around here and there and to check get get to get different you know, help from various people just to survive that day and they trusted god and they they overcame their problems and we heard testimonies like that and we, we our problem was nowhere near there <laughs> i mean we had um, you know pressure from various people and um, you know but it it was not we were doing good it's just that we we didn't have that money to pay back the creditors immediately but in our mind before we learned about the testimony of other believers in our mind it was very big who oh, <laughs> right we have such a huge amount that we had to repay and that was dominating our mind you know but as we as we got to know right the situation of other people and how god helped them us felt like nothing right that's one good benefit of having fellowship with other believers right sometimes when you are stuck alone all by yourself your problem seems to be so huge and the devil will deceive you don't you know, trying to tell you that you're the only one who is facing this problem nobody understands you nobody knows what you're going through <laughs> right no lot of people have gone through what you are going through and they have gone through worse situations than you and they have overcome hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so teaching these things to our studying this for ourselves will help us overcome and when we teach this to our children they will be strong they will be bold they will be courageous to overcome Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. All right. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's read from verse 5. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not and she will preserve thee, love her and she will keep thee, protect wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all you are getting get understanding exalt her exalt wisdom and she will promote thee underline that phrase, uh, that particular part of the verse right exalt wisdom and wisdom will promote you she wisdom will bring thee to honor there it's the same thing 
Hallelujah. When thou dost embrace her, wisdom will give to your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Promotion and wisdom are connected. You can see exam examples of that in the Bible. And as I was preparing for this particular message, the Holy Ghost put this thought inside my heart to teach on this subject. And as I was preparing, the Holy Ghost led me to this particular verse. I, this was not part of my original text at all. There's one reason for that. This, this, is, this has always been true, <laughs> right? But Holy Ghost wants to do a job in the body of Christ concerning wisdom in the coming days. There is a work that God wants to do through the body of Christ. And he is going to give wisdom, great wisdom to the believers to accomplish great things, both in, the term, in terms of ministry and in the secular field. God wants to do that through believers. God wants to do awesome things through believers. Great inventions, mighty things, business ideas, strategies, governing methods. In, in, in the area of politics. God, God wants to reveal mighty things through the body of Christ. I would encourage you to trust God for this. Okay? No matter what your field is, on a daily basis, seek God for wisdom. And seek His word and seek God. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Now, let's go to Psalm 113. Psalm 113. Let's read from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Now, why? And then the Holy Ghost gives his reasons. What exactly does he want us to praise him for? Right? If you read the Bible, you know, he will always give you a reason. And right? people praise God and thank God for a reason. That's very powerful. When you think about something that God has actually done or what God uh, actually does, you know, his attributes and his way of doing things. When, when you associate thanksgiving and praise with who he is and what he does, it's a powerful thing. Hallelujah. And some people keep on saying, you know, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, they don't give any reason why they are praising God. They are not thinking, actively thinking about something God has done, either in their life or in, in the Bible. And right? they are saying, praise God, praise God, praise God. And that may help a little bit, but not much. And right? You know, what will actually help you when you actually think about something specific that God has done for you? Or something that God has done in the Bible, or something God is doing in your nation, in your city, in your church, or something specific. And you think about it, and then you thank God for that. That's very powerful, actually. Hallelujah. So look at this. The Lord is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwells on high? Our God is the Most High. So he has the ability to exalt people or to demote people, to promote them or demote them. And he, he has the power, power to exalt or to abase. And he does that. This is something God does. This is his nature. He, he exalts some people he, and he abases some people. The Bible teaches that, right? And uh, so why is he able to do that? Because he is the most high. He is more powerful than anybody and everybody. You put all the angels together, God is more powerful than them. You put all of mankind together, God is more powerful than them. You put all the demons together, God is more powerful than them. God is almighty. <laughs> he is greater by a huge margin. I love the verse in Ephesians. It says, where God is seated in our Lord Jesus. God raised him from the dead and seated him. Not a little above the demons and the principalities and the powers. No. He seated him far above far above <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right so that's who we are serving he is well able to exalt us to promote us hallelujah now let's look at verse 6 
who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth what does he do he raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with princes even with the princes of his people hallelujah so even if you if you're at the bottom of the bottom right god is able to exalt you god is able to promote you god is able to do mighty things for you this is our god this is whom we serve hallelujah let's look at one more verse before we proceed further go with me to first samuel chapter 2 this is a great prayer right one that hannah prayed it's very prophetic right nah? even though she was beginning to praise god for because god gave her children she was barren for a long time and um now that god has given her a child and she was ecstatic you know and she started praising god and um and she said many things we are focusing on this particular point go with me to verse 8 he raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dung hill to set them among princes to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the lords and he has set the world upon them so because god is the most high and because he is the creator of heaven and earth he is well able to promote whomever he wants hallelujah go with me to psalm 75 psalm 75 you need to have a scriptural foundation for what we are talking about so that your faith will be strong hallelujah so he is speaking to certain people and he is saying you know um lift no verse 5 lift not up your horn on high speak not with a stiff neck why for promotion comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south but god is the judge he puts down one and sets up another hallelujah hallelujah to jesus this is what god does he puts down one and he sets up another promotion comes from god almighty who is the judge hallelujah go with me to daniel the book of daniel chapter 4 let's look at verse 17 Daniel chapter 4 verse 17 this this is part of what was spoken to Nebuchadnezzar uh, in a dream as a judgment actually but uh, there is a mighty truth here so let's look at that this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent this this is the intent god wanted the living talking about men right he wanted the living people the people who are alive on planet earth to know something what is it that god wanted the people on the earth to know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will and sets up over it the basest of men god can lift a nobody and make them the king or emperor of the most powerful kingdom of the earth god is well able to do that Okay? and uh, this is a lesson god wants mankind to learn this is something god wants you and i to know right hallelujah this should be a part of our uh, thought process and our belief system god is well able to exalt and promote hallelujah and he is even able to give the kingdoms to men whomever he wills hallelujah hallelujah to jesus keeping these thoughts in mind let's go to the book of esther hallelujah we are going to begin our study with the book of esther chapter 1 hallelujah to jesus there is a little bit let me give you a little background so here um we have uh, this king ahasuerus right who is uh, over the kingdom of persia and the median empire and um so he gives a great party because he has ascended to the throne and um, one day he calls the queen to come and uh, uh, come to the party so that he can display her beauty to all those people you know he wants to show off look how good my wife looks and she refuses and uh, so <laughs> that becomes a great uh, uh, reason for for a lot of debate and then it ends up in the demotion of uh, queen vashti 
uh, she is being demoted and uh, later they want somebody else to replace her so they went about searching for a suitable woman in this vast kingdom hallelujah so that's how this whole story begins let's go to chapter 2 chapter 2 and um, so when they started looking so this, this is for the most powerful man on the planet at that time this is the most powerful empire so they they were looking for for beautiful women right so all the women who were um, who were taken to the palace at this point of time they were all beautiful right and uh, uh, because because they they were not uh, you know looking for a woman for for an ordinary guy this is um, agasius king <laughs> right hallelujah so at that time they found somebody called esther hallelujah they took her along with the, the rest of the girls to the palace and let's read something about esther because you need to know her background hallelujah hallelujah to jesus in verse 5 esther chapter 2 verse 5 now in sushan the palace there was a certain jew whose name was mordecai the son of jair the son of shimai the son of kish a benjamite who had been carried away from jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with jeconiah king of judah whom nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon had carried away and he brought up hadassa that is esther hadassa is her uh, hebrew name esther looks like her persian name his uncle's daughter for she had neither father nor mama nor mother she was an orphan and the maid was fair and beautiful who mordecai when her father and mother were dead took for his own daughter uh, this, this this is the background we have about esther not much else is revealed to us in the bible so she is a jewish woman and uh, she is a captive right she she is part of the captivity that was brought by nebuchadnezzar from uh, jerusalem to babylon and um, hallelujah so mordecai you know th- this is a trait of mordecai if you not and we will talk about that quite a bit towards the end of um, uh, i mean at a later stage actually and he is a man who wants to help his people i think we should look at it go with me to chapter 10 is the chapter 10 and look at this this is at the later stage many of you would know this um, story you know Uh, this uh, the events uh, that came to pass during the time of esther uh, there is one particular verse i want to focus on for mordecai the jew was next to king ahasuerus by the time everything was said and done mordecai was exalted to the position of basically a prime minister just next to king ahasuerus and great among the jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren notice this seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed he had this character of wanting to be a blessing to people mordecai sought the wealth of his people or welfare of his people or he wanted to uh, be a blessing to his people and he spoke peace to all his people right so mordecai used his position of influence to be a blessing to the other jews and this was his nature you see even when he was uh, not a great man even when he was not in a powerful position he was still wanting to be a blessing that's why he took um, hadassa or esther and uh, he he basically adopted her and raised her as his own daughter hallelujah see he, he wanted to be a blessing to her at a later stage in his life when he heard about a plot against the king the emperor he did not just keep quiet saying what what's my problem no he went and actually reported it to esther who certified it to the king in his name hallelujah see he he, he was um, he had this disposition to help other people to be a blessing to other people 
so when whenever there was an opportunity to do something he did it hallelujah later we can see you know how broken he was when he found out that uh, because of him the entire jewish race is now in danger <laughs> and later when god intervened and solved all the problem and mordecai was exalted right to be the second most powerful man in this vast empire he used his position to be a blessing to people right he was not vain like haman right haman was just thinking about his greatness his power right he was so vain he he wanted to um uh, erase a whole race from the planet because one man from that race offended him talk about vanity and pride right but mordecai was not like that mordecai used that same position to bless his entire race hallelujah hallelujah to jesus see that's what god is looking for that that's the attribute he is looking for he is looking for people who will be mindful to be a blessing say this with me mindful to be a blessing wanting to bring the blessing of god to others wanting to bring the goodness of god to others right that that's something god desires in closing let let me show you something go with me to philippians 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 chapter 1 and uh, let's look at something that paul said hallelujah to jesus verse 21 onwards for to me to live is christ to die is gain but if i live in the flesh that is in the body this is the fruit of my labor yet what i shall choose i wot not for i am in a strait betwixt two having a desire to depart and to be with Christ which is far better he's saying you know it's better for me to just die and go to heaven you know paul was facing persecution <laughs> like we have you know sometimes it's difficult even to imagine what he went through hallelujah you know sometimes we we should, when you are tempted to complain about the difficulties in your life think about what paul went through <laughs> that will put an end to it hallelujah hallelujah to jesus and um, so it 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 is it would be tempting for somebody who was in paul situation to just think okay let me just go to you know, just me let me just die and go to heaven be with the lord jesus and actually that is far better just being with the lord jesus is far better but paul says something very interesting right he says nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more needful for you why am i here why am i living on this planet because it's more needful for you so we all have to come to that place which where we start thinking about god's plan for our lives and how by fulfilling god's plan we can be a blessing to people now there are different levels of being a blessing we can all be a blessing by speaking a word a, a courteous word right a word of blessing to people by praying for people by you know doing something practical for people you know buy them clothes give people money help and you know, deliver them from some kind of a bad situation and that's one way one level of being a blessing but there is an entire different level of being a blessing where you find out what what god wants you to do and you start doing that right because when, when the moment you enter into god's plan for you and you start applying yourself in that area and and you st- start doing that you you become a blessing to a whole range of people and god will amplify your ability to touch people when you give yourself to his plan hallelujah So Paul is saying the only reason that he was alive was people needed him. Right? Think about that. Why 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 is it he chose to live? He chose to live because people needed him. 
his life was a blessing to them his teaching his prayers his entire life <laughs> was was a blessing to people hmm? and having this conference verse 25 I know that I shall abide and continue with you all notice for your furtherance and the joy of faith he says my life is a blessing to the body of christ if i'm alive the body of christ will benefit from my life okay so i'm going to choose to be here and not depart at this point of time hallelujah Uh, this mindset should be developed by every christian the desire to be a blessing to people to live a life that becomes a blessing to people because as as we study the subject of promotion you will see that that's the key that's the key that's what god is looking for hmm? and that is the reason for promotion for in- increasing your ability and your influence and your ability to reach more people touch more people hallelujah the promotion that the purpose of promotion is this the furtherance of god's kingdom right and us being a blessing to people that, that that's the purpose of promotion Hallelujah. We will talk more about this in the coming days. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.